Today, we're looking at Birmingham Pen Company's David Osilic Lilac Wind. Wow, that was a lot. I had to double check and make sure I had that whole name. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Birmingham Pen Company's David Osiznik Lilac Wind is kind of a purpley ink, kind of a dusty purple. Before we go to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. And up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down, I immediately dunk it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very nice, or this kind of grayish line on the bottom and this nice light purple work its way up, becomes a darker purple, and then a dark blue across the top. The one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. That line across the bottom is thicker and darker, but the rest of the chromatography looks exactly the same. That line on the bottom gives me the feeling that this ink could have a little bit of permanence to it. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. I let that smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it performed perfectly with the highlighter. Yes, it reactivates and, it fe and not feathers, but spreads slightly, but that's okay. I can read it perfectly with what's there. Makes me not afraid to have to highlight something when I'm taking notes. Looking at the water, for 30 seconds of that drop being down there and then I just dab it up, a lot of that ink reactivated and completely pulled up off the page. That means this cleans out of your pens super easy. Pen flush didn't seem to have as good an effect as water did, which is quite strange. It did reactivate some, it did pull some up, but it doesn't look like pen flush removed as much of this ink as water did, which is very strange, but that's what the result is. Bleach, as would be expected, has obliterated and completely removed it. It does leave kind of this very light khaki color there behind. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Birmingham Pen Company's David Osiznik, oh, oh, good lord, David Osiznik, Lilac Wind. It's a big name and I'm going to struggle with it all video. Has a viscosity of 1.56, which makes this a very wet ink. To find my average dry times, I use the writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper with the extra fine and medium nib. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Birmingham Pen Company's David Oselznik Lilac Wind, yes, has an average dry time of 12 seconds, which makes it a faster drying ink, which is pretty impressive considering how wet this ink is. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form, and just because this always might be somebody's first video, this sample form is absolutely not helpful. It took a lot of effort to ink up across Bailey to write my notes, and this is not a large nib. Because it's so shallow, and having to turn it, you really run the risk of spill, that's not what that is. That's mess from opening these. There's this inner seal thing they have and it just pops ink everywhere when you go to use this sample. I've come to uh, not look forward to using their ink because of the sample vial it's in. And yes, I know, I could put it into a different sample vial. I shouldn't have to receive an ink and decant it into a different sample vial in order to be able to use it without making a bloody mess everywhere. And this ink from this makes a tremendous mess. It's horrible to deal with. 
Anyway, to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Let's look at Clairefontaine. That's not bleed, that's transfer from a page underneath because I'm a wreck. But we have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We do get really nice shading throughout the 1.1. The extra fine, a darker tone than we got with the 1.1. With the 1 .1. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Nice shading throughout, not dramatic. Not a dramatic shade at all, but there is some nice shading that goes on where it goes from a darker, from a, a, a dark mid-tone to a very dark tone. So it's not showing as well on camera, but jumps is a different tone than the. Over is a different tone than jumps. The does change tone where it starts lighter and gets a bit darker. For the most part, we see a tone difference from one word to the other, not contained within the same word. <coughs> Seven seconds to dry. The medium gives us a darker tone again. It has the beginnings of feathering. Now it's just a little woolly around the edges. I see it a lot in dry. I see it some in lazy. But other than that, other than those two spots, I didn't see much other feathering. But there is certainly some feathering that's going on. I see it again in the. There's no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade for this being darker when it goes down. Now the scrubby on the extra fine shows us some color variation. It's not showing up on camera, but we do see some in the scrubby. The medium shows us no color variation. And we didn't get any color variation in the writing. So this holds pretty true. The smear test says you can likely recover this if you did smear while you were writing. So we look at Tomoe River, which gives us no bleeding. It does give us ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather, no spread. We do get halo throughout this writing, which is very nice. No sheen and no shade. The extra fine... A slightly darker tone, a slightly darker tone than we had with the 1.1. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. 12 seconds to dry. Now the medium gives us a darker tone again. So it really begins to look like the way you control the tone of this color is through what nib you choose. <coughs> Excuse me. Through what nib you choose. Now we have the medium. The medium is a darker tone again. It has no feather, no spread. It has haloing through a ton of the writing. No sheen and no shade, 18 seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. The scrubby does show us a little bit of that haloing with the medium. The smear test, you are not gonna recover this if you smear while you're writing. So I look at Rhodia. Rhodia gives us no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen but certainly get color variation throughout the writing. And some of the color variation we get is in a single word, which I have an appreciation for. David shows a couple different tones in it. The O starts lighter and gets darker. Birmingham starts darker, gets lighter, gets darker again. So that's very nice that it's doing that. The extra fine is a darker tone. Let's see if we can adjust this here a little bit. It's a darker tone. It has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. We have no shading on this paper with this ink. Nine seconds to dry. The medium, a darker tone than we had with the extra fine. And ignoring where my thumb goes, when I'm writing sometimes, I don't know why, just goes there to hold the paper down. Ignoring that spot, which is the only spot we see any shading occur, and that's going to be from the oils in my hand. The medium gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. 14 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby confirms this. The scrubby gives us that there's no color variation in this ink. We got no color variation in a writing sample. The smear test says you can likely recover this. So I tested it on black and red paper, which gave us no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 gave no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Lovely shading all the way through all of that writing with the 1.1. 
Now it's not like it's a dry pen, but the it the the stub kind of squeegees it down, puts leaves less of it there, which is the reason that that happens. It's very nice. I think the nicest writing with this ink has been with the stubs. Extra fine, a darker tone than we had with the 1.1. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Five seconds to dry. We go to the medium that gives us an even darker tone. And we get some feathering, some very light feathering. Bits that make part of it look just a little bit blurry. I see it in the middle of quick. I see it in the left side of jumps. I see it uh, some in uh, seconds. So we get little bits of... The beginnings, really small feathers. I don't think it's entirely distracting from the writing, so it wouldn't be something that should stop you from using this ink on this paper. Just be aware that it is going to happen with your broader, wetter pens. Medium also has no, uh, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. Seven seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us some color variation in the extra fine, and we did get some color variation. The medium said no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. And the smear, I don't know if you could recover this on this paper if you smeared it. So I look at Limon paper. That has had trouble finding a match. It's got one match. It's been having trouble finding others. The Limon paper definitely has the beginnings of bleed. It is nowhere near coming through to touch the page underneath. Nowhere near it. It just makes the back of the page unusable. And of course with that, there's a ton of ghosting that's just bound to happen with this much bleeding into, but not through, the paper. The 1.1, we have spread. We have god-awful feathering. It's disgusting. We have no halo, no sheen, no shade. It's ugly. The extra fine... The extra fine has spread. It has feathering. The feathering's worse than it was on the black and red, but it's nowhere near as bad as what we see with the 1.1 or what we're going to see with the medium. But the feathering's bad, and for the bleed, I don't know that I would use this. No halo, no sheen, no shade. Five seconds to dry. We go to the medium, which is a darker tone, and we have spread. And we have crazy feathering. It's Big Bird's cousin feathering. Just amazing amounts. You wouldn't know that an ink could actually feather this much, but it does. No halo, no sheen, no shade. Six seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. And the smear test says, unfortunately, you could probably recover what you wrote on this paper. I say unfortunately because please don't use this ink on this paper. And that's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Birmingham Pen Company's, David Oselznik, Lilac Wind, I've preferred, I prefer to find an ink that will complement its color on the page. I've chosen Robert Oster's Peppermint because it's a very nice green. It's a very pleasant green to look at with this great purple. I really wanted to find an ink with a much longer name to go with it. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Birmingham Pen Company's David Oselznik Lilac Wind? Besides it having an incredibly long name, I think it performs pretty well. Mostly. For the most part, it does pretty good. My biggest problem is those sample vials that are dreadful to deal with. Thanks for watching.